welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Fling Forward 2024. And look who I with me, Ben Gamble, Field CTO at Fabrica. David, thank you for having me on. It's great to be here. I'm loving the color of that top. You're bringing the energy today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Ben. And uh, I, I think the energy is uh, energy started from morning since the opening keynote. I saw such great announcements today. So many different. Uh, uh, conversations and such a huge community that you all have br brought together like uh, 500 plus people here and everyone uses Flink. They do, they do. So this is actually a little bit of a surprise for me. So when I started using Flink, it was quite a wa while ago in 2018. Right. And back then it felt like this tech on the web, some people are using it. And then it seemed like the thing the big Silicon Valley startups were mm. using. But when I kind of kind of got into it a bit more at my previous role and now at Verica is like the explosion of Flink as the thing to use in stream processing has been a wonder to see and the richness and depth of the community and how much they really care yeah. has been wonderful. That's awesome and yeah we've seen the growth and I also saw like mm -hmm. the chart of you know the contributions like it has grown massively over the years, it right? It really has. It is an enormous project. Yeah. I find that half my day is just telling people about Flink features <laughs> that have been here for more than three years and they've forgotten about. Yeah, I know. And I've been seeing you obviously talking to so many community members, customers, enterprise leaders, in uh, you know, all the attendees out there. So I know things are kind of keeping you busy, but then I wanted to, you know, uh, chat with me, chat with you about various things. I heard about Vera, and uh, obviously that's something pretty interesting. I'm kind of curious to know about uh, first of all what Vera is, and uh, also about the three key pillars. Cool. So Vera is a kind of cloud native engine for Apache Flink. Right. Now, the kind of st set the stage by going bit back a bit. So as you heard this morning from the history of Flink, yes. Flink came out of those bi those halcyon days of big data. Very similar kind of origin story to Spark. A right. university project went a bit out of control, a startup was made, money was raised, things went wild. Yep. But the thing is that, like a lot of things, those were designed in the era of spinning platter disks, mm -hmm. designed in the era of big data, meaning you know terabytes, not petabytes and exabytes. Mm. And what that meant is that like there's a lot of optimizations that can be made when you start saying, okay, where are the real limitations? Mm. Now, Flink has had 10 years of evolution, and we're trying to bring a bit more of a cloud native revolution on top of that. And Vera exists for exactly that. The kind of three core pillars are streaming data movement, mm -hmm. real-time stream processing, and the stream house. Nice. Okay, those are fantastic uh, insights uh, and great pillars. I'm also going to get more into the depth of it. Uh, so how does, well, first of all, how does Vera stand out in the competitive real-time analytics space? Uh, where do you see it going? Ooh, so this is kind of an interesting one because real-time analytics has started to spread out right. like everything when it becomes the norm. So the idea of having analytics which is slow these days is kind of bad. We've all been there waiting for something to go by. Yeah. You ever try to load, you load your YouTube stats and you sit and watch the page going, come on, come on. You're right. It's You're slow, right. isn't it? Yeah. So true. And that's like BigQuery. That's pretty fast by old school standards. But when you start trying to hit that really wide user base, like the need to have analytics going at high speeds, or when you have, let's say, transactional data going through a bank, mm. it's no longer to wait good enough to wait that five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. It needs to be there in a millisecond so a machine can make a difference. Exactly. So this is what I call uh, operational analytics, where you're doing an analytics job, but a machine is the one looking at it. The machine is the one making some inference from it right. and then taking that forwards. So as real-time analytics has grown, Vera really comes into its own because we can serve both some user-facing type analytics we're all very, very familiar very with. Yeah. And you know, uh, to be honest, still the majority use cases. But as analytics becomes more operational, like uh, do we reorder stock today? Uh, do we slow down the next machine mm. in a production line? This is where having that true scale performance, the ability to have even larger state and ingest from almost any source becomes special. Yeah, I think uh, uh, great points there. Just a follow-up question on this. Uh, so what are the key features of Vera that makes it unique offering for, you know, even the enterprises out there who are using, uh, who are having large-scale data, right? Mm. So if we go back to the kind of three pillars, let's start with streaming data, mo yes. data movement. So this is kind of based upon partially uh, Flink CDC, a project we open sourced earlier this year where it enhances Flink's already great capabilities to connect to data sources across right. multiple formats. But we've kind of hardened it for Vera's own kind of purposes. So you can do things like select 
uh, create database as select. So this is like saying you've seen a MySQL cluster mm. might have 300 tables or a thousand tables. In TIDB, it could be a million tables. But what happens next is you go select from insert into data warehouse all tables, and we can create that data warehouse from every single table dynamically with schema evolution nice. in real time. Wow. So all the CDC is handled, all the CDC is scaled. So there's none of these tables starving each other, none of these JVM jobs starving each other, because they're all flink workers. Mm. But it goes one step further because now it's being ingested in real time. Now we can act in real time. So it's, it's important, yeah, right? Because yeah. the feed is coming, why not split it, take it to the next job? So this is when you get to real time stream processing. So you can already ingest the data in real time, and then you can act upon it in real time. And then kind of Streamhouse is the kind of culmination of this because mm. you've got the big store growing over time. You've right. got the real time action taken where you need it. And this is the idea of almost a Lambda architecture in the in one box. Right, exactly. So, yeah, it looks like Kappa, but it's secretly Lambda done in a box. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, no, I think these are fantastic insights that you're kind of talking about. I'm kind of also curious to learn a little about the challenges, right? We've been, uh, and I also want to talk about the industries, which we mm. can come in later as well. Uh, but just about, you know, the challenges. So how does Vera address some of the challenges in real-time intelligence and data processing that businesses face today? The biggest one really comes from a, an enterprise state backend. So this is called Gemini. And what mm. happens in most things is eventually you come into the simple problem of one machine is only so big. And you can make a machine scary big these days, yeah. but that means you have a lot of state in one place. Fault tolerance starts to drop. Right. So the ability to have disaggregated state. Now, we're bringing this to the open source in Flink 2.0 anyway, but we've had it for a while in Vera. Mm. And this means that you can now act on state, not just in the gigabytes and maybe terabytes if you're feeling brave, but into the petabytes. Mm. It means you can have an unlimited amount of state in your Flink job right. and still maintain performance. When industry use cases get really big, yep. like we start thinking at some of the larger scales, uh, I was chatting to people at ShareChat mm. recently, and their engineers use Flink a lot, and they're processing billions of records per second, and they yes. have the same problem, which is that you know how big a state can get. It's a really amazing talk by some of their engineers. I strongly recommend. Yeah, no, yeah. I, d I, I love that example, and uh, yeah. thanks for sharing that. I'm kind of also curious to learn, since we are on this topic, mm. uh, I know you have so many customers, you all have you are working sl closely to make sure they are on the path to success. So mm -hmm. can you tell some customer stories or anything that you've been, you know, I know these three days already have been so busy with you and tomorrow will be another one. Uh, anything that comes on top of your mind, even if it's industry specific that you would like to share? So a couple of really kind of interesting stories have been emerging. So. A fun one was, so in the last, so before today, the last two days have been training. So this yeah. has been us doing deep, a combination of a boot camp to try and get people into Flink, yes. combined with some deep dives into some of the more interesting topics. Yeah. Now mine was AI and ML in Flink. Mm. So I've spent half my career as an AI, as not an AI engineer, but an ML engineer. ML. And building things like TensorFlow models, and I was showing people how to put them directly into the Flink streams without mm. using Python. So all in Java, all in JVM, how to load a TensorFlow model nice. is just a piece. And it's just like people going, wait, what, you can do this? Yeah. And then the next piece was, wait, what, you can do the next step, which was, <laughs> how do I take an action with that data? Right. And it's just the fact that like, there are people who have these, who are building these, these models, really complicated models, and having to then try to move that in and out of Flink to try and handle things for their AI people, their ML yep. people, or just the fact that like some of their use cases have such tight latency requirements. It's like mm. make a decision, act. You've got 10 milliseconds end to end. Yeah. And then just, you know, they're splitting Fast. away code over and over again. Like, no, you can't add a line here. It's too slow. Mm. So some of the amazing stories I've heard about true latency requirements, true security requirements. And this is like some true, like, you know, inline processing for exactly. credit card or fraud or often cybersec. Mm. So I, I think this kind of also helps like a lot of regulated industries is what yes. I'm kind of seeing finance kind of plays a very important role. Like it, I was talking to Igor just uh, today as well and he was telling me such great stories about mm. the finance world and how, it, you know, it, it, the data security as well, the compliance, uh, you know, the yes. data governance, right? All those stories. So it's all fun stuff. Uh, also, uh, thinking a little about the future, how do you see the future of data streaming? Uh, where do you see it going? Uh, and I'm kind of also curious to learn a little about what are the developments that you expect in the near future as well? So 
one of the things about data streaming is it hasn't stood still. And I think we can all agree the one constant in the engineering world these days is change, right? Mm. And although I'm very, very happy to see how Flink is evolving onwards yeah. and kind of really staying ahead of the curve, it's things like Fluss, which was announced on the keynote today, exactly. which is quite the, it's, it's the thing I've been telling people, watch the keynote, watch yeah. the keynote for yeah. Like this is a bit of an interesting innovation. It kind of models this Apache Arrow type thinking, gives you a column, a streaming store. Yep. And this is actually like one of the interesting innovations as like it wasn't really possible in yesteryear because if you're trying to stream chunks of data, you wanted them small so you wouldn't risk the network. And now you can stream bigger chunks. It makes sense to stream columns suddenly. Right. And because of Arrow is an IPC format as well yeah. as an in-date memory format, you suddenly get this ability to say, wait, I can run analytics on the wire almost rather yeah. than just in process. Yeah. And this is why Fluss is one of those really kind of powerful ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the announcement and I was like blown away. Like, it, wow. It what is, is unlocked. So, yeah. Crazy cool. It's a bit way away, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm holding a hope we get an internal preview soon. And yeah. Be open. We can't wait. We can't yeah. wait for sure. Definitely yeah. looking forward to that. Um, also, uh, one last question for you. If, uh, folks want to reach out to you, learn mm. more about the different things. I know you're active on various social platforms. Uh, how can they reach out to you, learn more about sure how what y'all are doing in the space? So um, on socials, I am Ben Gamble 7 everywhere you go. Okay. From literally, I am I'm lazy. My own name is something I can remember. <laughs> so I'm like, if I can remember it, you can remember it. Yes, so that's right. So I'm at Ben Gamble 7 on, on uh, Blue Sky, Twitter, uh, my LinkedIn uh, URL is Ben Gamble Seven as well. Yes, everything's easy that way. Other than that, I write for the Viverica blog uh, increasingly regularly. But yep. um, find me on LinkedIn. I'll I, I tend to write there with a slightly more snarky attitude <laughs> than I do on our own <laughs> blog. <laughs> That's awesome. No, yes. it's great. We've seen all the great work that you you've always done for the community, mm -hmm. and you keep doing it. So thanks for that. Uh, Anything else? When can we expect Flink Forward 2025? <laughs> so, well, to be honest, there's two more Flink Forwards coming up. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's one in Shanghai and one in Jakarta. So I'll be at the one in Jakarta this nice. year. Nice. Yeah. Very interesting. And I think it's happening this year also. Yeah, so in December, I'll be in Jakarta um, at Flink Forward, one of the Flink Forward Asias. And I'm nice. kind of excited to see what we announce, what's being announced there. Wow. So yeah. uh, the story doesn't stop here. It doesn't it's stop there for this year. But yeah. beyond that, so Flink Forward 2025 is something we we are already in discussions about what it will look like. Wow. We won't be doing it won't be the 10 year anniversary again, which is sad because it's been <laughs> such a magical event so far. Yeah, true. And we've got so many cool people together for it, but we hope the next generation of Flink Forwards at least is as good as this. The community is growing massively and uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's going to be massive. Yeah. The 11th year we are waiting for it. <laughs> Uh, we are too. We are too. And hell, next week I'm at the Data Stream Summit, as I mentioned previously. So I'll yes. be on stage with CG again, talking about our partnership and what we're doing next together. Excited about that. I'm going to be chatting with CG as well oh. uh, on the Robert Show. So it's going to be oh, excellent. He's a, he's a great character. He's done some amazing work. Awesome. Such a pleasure chatting with you, Ben. And finally, good to meet you in person. Yeah, We've been connected been since a while. but then We have, yeah. We've been trading kind of little stories and, and messages on socials for a while now, yeah. That's right. But love uh, all your insights and thanks for visiting the Robert Show again. Oh, thank you so much for coming. It's been really great having you here. It's been a blast for us as well. Yeah, Thank you awesome. very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.